wake of the current dengue fever outbreak, the Progressive Liberal Party, which puts the interests of Bahamians first, calls on the governing free national movement to be more vigilant in its fight to contain the dengue fever outbreak. Of great concern is the apparent disconnect between what the government said to the public and what it has in fact done. As long ago as July of 2010, when there were some 17,000 cases of dengue fever reported in the Caribbean, the health minister in a newspaper interview suggested that the government was in a state of full readiness to deal with any potential health crisis stemming from dengue fever. We are on top of it to ensure we do not have an outbreak in the Bahamas, he said. We are doing active fogging of our areas, especially now during the rainy season. He went on to say, we knew exactly where the location in which it was contracted is and environmental health went to fog the area. This year, in another newspaper interview, the minister once again asserted that the government was prepared. He is quoted as saying, we are being very proactive because of the change we saw over the last week. Because we know there is a dengue issue within the region, we do not want to find ourselves faced with a problem. Therefore, we have been proactive managing aggressively and investigating aggressively to ensure that we remain with zero mortality. Unfortunately, the minister and the government were not as prepared as he thought. For today in the Bahamas, there is a dengue fever epidemic with, according to the government, a reported 1,500 cases. Further, the outbreak has also indicated that three deaths may be linked to this outbreak. Indeed, it is known to health authorities that in a public health crisis, such as we are currently experiencing, the number of reported cases is just the tip of the iceberg. It is said that for every case that is reported to the authorities, there are at least four cases that go un unreported and are treated by individuals themselves. Thus, it is most likely that with 1,500 reported cases, representing about 20% of the actual cases, there are likely to be as many as 6,000 unreported cases. And that would be a total of more than 7,000, almost 8,000 cases. Now, dengue fever, as you all know, is an infectious tropical disease caused by a virus transmitted to humans by the Aedes aegypti mosquito. Fortunately, most people recover with supportive treatment and few have to be hospitalized. Nevertheless, when it reaches epidemic proportions as it has done in the Bahamas at this time, it strains the public health services to its limits. That is why it is so important always to be in a highly preventative mode, especially in the rainy season. The mortality rate for dengue fever is less than 1%, unless the hemorrhagic fever, which is characterized by bleeding, low platelet levels, and leakage of blood plasma, develops. Clearly, the health authorities, both in the Ministry of Health and in the Department of Environmental Health Services has been caught off guard and the introduction of prevention measures was made at too late a stage and was inadequate and ineffective. Information received by us suggests that the Department of Environmental Health Services did not receive an adequate supply of spare parts, equipment, materials and supplies which were requested to assist them with their vector control operations. The justification for the request included among other things, that supplies and equipment for the treatment and surveillance program to control the vector associated with malaria and dengue fever. We note that the budget for vector control was reduced from a million dollars in 2009-2010 budget to just $600,000 last year and $600,000 for this upcoming year, which means that it has been decreased by $400,000. We asked the government today to justify an almost 40% cut in its vector control budget operations over the last two fiscal periods. An examination of the line items in the budget will show that it's gone down from $1 million to $600,000. We have also been informed that this has put a terrible st strain on our vector control resources during this horrific outbreak. It has even been said that the fogging solution which is being sprayed throughout our communities may in fact have had to be diluted in concentration so as to stretch its availability. Therefore, could that or could those circumstances have led to the lack of resources as requested by the department? And so we asked the government how much money was requested 
by the DEHS? Is the department being provided with the allocated funds in a timely manner to allow it to fulfill its mandate to control the mosquitoes associated with dengue fever and malaria? And can they assure the Bahamian public that the department now, in the midst of an epidemic, finally has all the resources that it needs? Whatever the answer to our questions, there are some realities which must be faced and dealt with effectively. We are currently in a health crisis and we are in an epidemic over which we do not yet have control. The epidemic is not abating due to the inability thus far to control the vector. This raises another concern. It has to be borne in mind that there is another danger for us here in the Bahamas. The Nopheles mosquito which transfers malaria may thrive under the same conditions which promote the Aedes aegypti. If one mosquito population is growing, chances are that the other may also be growing as well. Thus, if we are unable to get the mosquito population under control for dengue fever, we could also be in danger of the recurrence of a malaria outbreak. The Aedes aegypti is a domestic mosquito found primarily inside the home. So it is important that when fogging is done, which they say between 4 a.m. and 6 a.m. in the morning, that the public is aware of where it is being done so that they can open their windows and permit the insect repellent to enter their homes. The mosquito in this case is in the home and usually bites in the mornings. Additionally, it should also be noted that several species of the Aedes mosquito transmits the yellow fever virus. Yellow fever is an acute viral hemorrhagic disease which causes jaundice. It has no cure. Its treatment like dengue fever is symptomatic and it can be prevented by vaccination. But I raise this because we will have to consider whether persons from certain countries where that disease is endemic who wish to come to the Bahamas should be required to be immunized in order to be allowed to enter the country, especially at a time like this when we have an epidemic. Yellow fever is endemic in some countries in the Caribbean and Latin America where Bahamians reside or study and from which we attract tourists. Indeed, I am informed that some airlines insist that passengers from such countries are immunized if they are traveling to countries like ours that do not have yellow fever. Now, I do not know whether the Ministry of Health has considered the potential effect and whether the Ministry of Tourism has been warned as to the potential impact on persons traveling to the Bahamas, but it is incumbent for us to deal with this effectively. While the government and its various authorities have a major role to play in the eradication of this health crisis, I must say that the role of the individual cannot be overemphasized. As I have traveled throughout the island, it is clear to me that individuals are not aware of how important it is that they are in the, pre are in the prevention of the spread of this disease. They appear to be ignoring the advice about dress, the advice about pooled water, and the use of insect, insect repellents. As I said before, mosquito control is key, and prevention requires control or eradication of the mosquitoes carrying the virus. What should the public do? Empty old tires, trash cans, and flower pound, point, pots? Wear long pants and long sleeves? Use repellent sprays that are effective? If possible, stay indoors for two hours after sunrise and before sunset. Avoid standing water. What should the government do? The government is responsible for epidemic preparedness and response. Regular fogging of all areas with daily fogging at peak times in the most susceptible areas. Regular immunization from, for persons from foreign countries that are, have an endemic yellow fever population. Regular garbage collection, re removal of debris and derelict vehicles distribution of information flyers, especially in the most susceptible areas, and frequent public service announcements on both radio and television. In this epidemic, the government has fallen short in a number of areas. There are numerous complaints about the lack of regular garbage collection in my constituency in which we are currently standing, being in Grantstown. There are streets which I will not name where the sight of garbage in yards and in dumpsters overflowing with garbage will make one weak. Many persons try to clean up their yards and are encouraged to pile garbage up in the streets for collection, but weeks go by without the garbage being collected. There are hundreds of abandoned cars all over New Providence, some with warnings on them, but the warnings are never carried out. In fact, I heard the 
the acting minister for the environment telling people to get rid of derelict vehicles. But you know, that really is currently a job of, the, of his department. Unfortunately, the nightmare that has been created by the New Providence Road Improvement Program is another problem with the creation of literally hundreds of open trenches in which mosquito larvae are deposited and from which mosquitoes emerge in growing numbers. So, the major lesson to be learned here is what the government should not do, and principal among them is to cut the budget on crucial public health areas, such as prevention of epidemics, such as the one in which we find ourselves today. It will cost the country far more than the 400000 they saved when they cut the budget for vector control. It will cost the country far more to restore the affected citizens to good health and maintain the good health of the rest of us. Thank you.